bait them into like a PL pick. So I maybe a little bit questionable where it's gonna be like a PL or Naga. Plus then you've got Undying yeah. on the team and nobody really wants that past like the ten Come on, mark. man. Undying <laughs> more like the five oh, and a half minute yeah. mark. <laughs> True. As True. night falls, the undying disconnects. Yeah, he's like, Well, my job here is done, I'm gonna go stack some camps and pick my nose. Uh but they're gonna go for the Oracle instead. Uh opting for some save, yeah. opting for a bit a of fun, carry. opting for yeah, yeah but it's a bit of solo magic coming down on this bad boy, so uh making the puck even more annoying or perhaps five, buffing up Doom, but much more likely just gonna be saving these big fat calls in the middle of the safe lane. Real question is they now need to decide where they're kind of putting all the heroes. They've got again still the flexibility with all their picks. It's where do they put it next? I think Leshrac could be a very good hero for VP, especially mm -hmm. because they've got the like Leshrac needs that enabling factor. You then can have obviously Oracle is the enabling factor. You've got the team fight from Puck and you've got your front line from Doom. So no, I like potentially Leshrac. Also, it flexes really nicely to last pick to be able to decide where it's going, safe lane or, or mid. And fly to me again. Like this is such classic drafting right now, which is your second pit. You pick two open-ish heroes. You then pick your casual five support. They then respond with five support, forcing you to then have to then show your hand. Mm -hmm. And this is why second pick, you don't really control the draft up until the last pick is within when you kind of go, huzzah! Here's my trap card. I'm gonna pick my win condition or my big my big heroes are gonna have impact yeah as second pick you get answered basically through the uh yeah, through the middle the of the entire draft draft yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. well yeah through yeah picks three four and five uh, two three and four sorry morphling though Ooh. Do. okay Watery boy gonna come splashing into our game that's always nice to see yeah it's pleasant uh, especially when the that... sports have already been picked, it means nothing like, you know, that AA or uh, something like that is going to come out. It's just not possible. And neither of these guys want to be building themselves a uh, spirit vessel particularly. So, yeah, pretty solid morphling pick so far. I think another way of looking at this pick is it's potentially blocking the an upcoming gyro that could have come up from Flight to Moon. I know there's no IO, but I think gyro by himself is still a very scary hero if you have enough team fight to support him. So you, you take away the... The direct enable, but then you provide him a platform to actually output his damage. So that's uh, another avenue for, or reason for the morphling pick potentially. I think Fly to Moon might just go for like a a void or something very team fight orientated. You can then eventually you can pick get your tower damage through your last pick. OD instead, sure. Okay, right. cool. I'm into it. Blows up the Morphling through most parts of the game exactly. until obviously later on. The Morph can become the OD to then obviously get some of his own mana himself. I I don't mind it. I just I've not seen ODs really pop off recently because of the the aggression. But I guess the the scenario here is a little bit different where VP doesn't really have the ability to truly force an early an early timing. So Fly to Moon can obviously just pick a slightly greedier hero. And be perfectly fine. I think yeah. if Fight Moon pick another greedy hero, they put themselves in a position of VP being able to like run over them. But... Uh, it's also a shining beacon of Doom Me as well, because uh, Odie is one yeah. of the worst heroes in the game to get doomed. So, of course, if uh, Resolution can ever get that one off, then uh, Fight Moon are going to struggle from there on out because that hero absolutely hates being doomed. The real question is how do they take their carry? Like, currently. One of their big win conditions is OD Sanities on top of the Morphling, blow him up, VP doesn't have a core. Of course, VP still have another core to pick, but I think I really like, like to me to pick an active core and try and just play off of the OD gets his early items, he has an entire team to play with him, rather than OD might have his items, but then the carries had an all awkward game, so I, I don't want to say Jug, because jug, maybe Jug but then it's not really good against Morphling. But again, you have the OD for that. Yeah. Mm, I, I think Void, even though it's good, you might be a little bit too slow where you're, everyone's trying to farm and hit creeps and VP can just punish that with a really high tempo hero. Yeah, I mean, I think that's very nice. But you want you want a hero which can do stuff, I think, from here on out. You know, mm -hmm. it's it's not a good meta for picking two farming cores anymore. Um, hasn't been for a while, so yeah, I'd definitely yeah. like to see... A hero which does things. Maybe a troll. Like Troll's a already banned. Oh, it is. Slark's okay. I don't mind. Oh, instant pick, by the way. Bloodseeker. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Okay, alright. 
yeah, this was this is my fear. Is like you pick no matter. Okay, I, I guess no matter what hero flight's being picked here, a Bloodseeker was probably being picked because you pick Slark, you pick Void, both of them counted by Bloodseeker. I don't think there's many carries that you can actually pick there that allow you to. Hmm, what is that tempo hero? No, oh, it doesn't matter. They didn't. They're not even going down that route anyway. Um. Yeah, I guess my main concern is simply the Slark can never like the Bloodseeker Slark matchup isn't as like scary as you really think. Where a Slark he has a rough time in the laning phase because of course the by the passive, but once he gets into that mid game, if he goes for the SMY Satanic build, he never actually cares about rupture because of course it doesn't last that long. He can always life still back up, and in the mid to late game, anyways, he doesn't really care about the passive too much because you never play on that low hp anyway you like you enter the fight you disengage you just change your play style to be you don't play to the ultimate limit you play to like 95 percent. yeah which means yeah. you don't ever drop to first right yeah so, for sure i mean it, it's not a hard counter matchup it, it never it used to be a long time ago but yeah definitely isn't anymore but it, it's it's still you know it gives you some useful uh tools mm -hmm. against the slark for sure um not just the Obviously, the, the first being the big one, but he doesn't really like playing into Rupture too much unless he can get out of vision. And, of course, the Blood Riot is just going to be very annoying for him if he's yeah. trying to just bring somebody down and you have, you've already used your Dark. But, yeah, it's, it's, it's a pretty straightforward matchup and uh, not one which is too troublesome for the Slark. But I do still think it's a good Bloodseeker pick just for the rest of the game. And, sure. uh, I guess the, the main thing to note, though, is when you look over these picks again, it's all about laning phase. Who's going to be able to get that early lead to kind of force it i think slark lich very strong lane especially when you're against a doom puck the puck being the three is probably better here because of course he can lane uh, i don't know how much pressure you're going to really apply to a slark in lane if, if for example you get a rotation in quite early on it's a free lane for slark to to do early damage yeah but reso puck should be fun to watch at the very least and... oh for sure like this puck will Knight should free farm. It's just, I don't think you're ever going to have kill potential. Yeah. yeah if exactly. anything, Radiant might die. If he wastes orb, he could die. If the Doom oversteps his mark and you get that early pounce with some shifts going, yep. he should die, right? A catch up, you know, if, uh, if Flight of Moon are somehow able to grab level 2 before the Puck can as well, and uh, they, he's only got the orb, then you can chase him down with the uh, Frost Blast and the uh, Frost Shield with a pounce from the Slark, that's a big threat as well if the Puck doesn't have any way to get out of it. So if, the rundown is look, very effective. Solo drawing two circles on the map saying, this is our top jungle, this is our bottom jungle. Just in case Pete, his in team here. wasn't aware. <laughs> Too many people actually like waste region. I think a common misconception in Dota is you need to ha you have to go for runes you have to trade, right? Like lose wasting two tangos for a rune just isn't worth it. No. You get 40 gold. But you're then using like 60 gold of Rito tangos for it, right? Like it's not worth it. No. In any way. Uh, the math does not check out. You're absolutely right. Thank you. My, I, yeah, I had to quickly punch the numbers in the calculator just to work out. Well, to be fair, it's 40 gold each. I mean, it does make a bit of a difference, but yeah, yeah. I don't if, care. If you, you're a very uh, self-centered player, which is unusual. No, for I'm all, yeah, I'm all about the all about the laning phase. Come on now. In the team, sure. Ugh. 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 Teammates, don't talk about those. Ugh. Yeah, you think I care about teammates when I got my own career? Like what? I can do my own things now. Iceberg, just uh, laying on a bit of aggression in these early levels onto the morphling, trying to shut no one out a little bit if he can. Not much he can do, but just gonna try and amp up the pressure, throw down some imprisonments, do what he can. Meanwhile, Doom up at the top lane. Playing to V2 and always want to fly. Along with Rezo. I say, expecting the uh, Puck to kind of take over this one, but there is kill potential available on Fly to Moon. Yeah, for sure. It's all about this uh, level 2. Whoever gets it first should be able to maybe nab a cheeky kill. And if the Slark gets that early kill, might set the tempo for the rest of the lane. And right now it's looking like Fly Playing to Moon for the might be able to make their first. Yeah, they should. They currently are leading in the old XP in the lane. That second range creep on the dire side, locking away valuable XP. Yeah, and there's a level two's coming out, but uh... here we go. Doom's this could gone be for a stroll. He's still holding the orb, so he's perfectly fine. Yeah, just uh, to be honest, 
won't use it unless absolutely forced to. But yeah, right now, even if they land the pounce on him, he's just got to wait for it to win and then orb himself away anyway. So absolutely zero threat. Currently speaking, Red Zone is no silly sausage. <laughs> Meanwhile, bottom lane though. Uh-oh, Oracle, he's going to be a first blood. A beautiful uh, la Lance, Lance? Spear coming out. Lance of Mars, that'll be an interesting one. I rate it. No, it sounds good. Yeah, sounds like the uh, like a cosmetic upgrade, you know. Indeedy. Um, yeah, this is a combo we've been seeing a lot of though. Is the uh, the cookie into uh, into spear? You know, it just gives, gives yeah. you the angle on it every time. Yeah. Uh, Snapfire is heavily enabled by any stunt, so you pair it with a Mars. It's it's like a free game. Have you like you think about the position five Snapfire with the position one less rep? It's such an easy lane to play. And same again in offlane when you have it as a four with a Mars on three. A bit of a kerfuffle coming out, and Doom is going to be the target of the kerfuffle. In fact, the one who has been kerfuffled into the grave is Zayat. He's going to be the only casualty up in this top lane. They were unable to bring down V Tune all the way down. So he's going to survive for the time being, and always want to fly. Just going to spam out these spells onto Rezo as well, just trying to harass him down as much as possible. And force out at the very least a salve usage. Mm, Vitrin doesn't actually have a self, so he's going to have to make the slow, slow heal up with uh, Tangos instead. Does have one on the courier, but it's a long way off. Still heading back to base from before. Well, have you seen the, uh, the right click from Doom, by the way? He's got the uh, critical strike, so... Ow. Big fat right click. Radiant yeah, yeah, when you crit on those Sunrise bad boys, down. it hurts. Meanwhile, in so the uh... bring out more region. Okay, cool. Yeah, so I was gonna say. Yeah, yeah, it's taking it. If he wasn't bring out more region, that would have been a. Ooh. It would have been somewhat uh, precarious of him, but yeah, he's. Uh, they've accepted a big loss up in the top lane. To be honest, they've uh, they sent the lich all the way back to base. He went walking. Vitune having to wait for his courier as well. So this is just kind of allowing resolution to get some more farm on the board, and I'm not sure how well they're going to be able to recover from this one. Always want to fly just yeah, sitting on the front lines now and popping that frost shield on himself as well. Look at this guy go. Always want to fly just manning up and chasing Rezo down. Like, come and hit me, boy. But uh, Vtune, he should be a little bit more cautious than this. They jump forwards. They don't quite land. No, Actually, no. The, the science there, I didn't think. And Vtune will be able to salve up. But always want to fly, though. Dead. Oh, dear. Level yeah. 2 scorched stuff. Yeah. Just melting. Sitting in that a little bit too long. He is a nice hero after all. Meanwhile, down the bottom lane, they get the kill out onto the Mars as well. So kills across the board. Both go in the way of Virtus Pro. Yeah, I think the important thing to note in top lane is like we said about this whole level two thing. It's the Slark lane goes well if you get that early level advantage and the new compressor. They got the they got the level two first, but they got the level two in a position where they couldn't actually utilize it, which just meant the Doom wasn't even there. That he comes back now, puck right clips. Now it's going to be a puck favored lane for sure, and the Slark's going to have quite a, a sad time being up there. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Meanwhile, no one making some plays in the middle lane, just diving forwards with a waveform to a grab a range group. That was pretty cute. Uh, V2 being forced right by back onto the dial. This isn't really a lane anymore. This is a one belonging to Virtus Pro. Meanwhile, let's have a look down on the bottom there. I haven't really talked about this one too much recently, but uh, Kumin sitting on 27 and 3 compared to the Mars' 21 and 7. And with a kill onto the Mars and a kill onto the Oracle as well, making things pretty even on that front also. But I think it was first blood the kill onto Oracle. Yeah, I hate observing did. when there's a morph in the game. You just constantly see his health dropping to nothing. You're like, oh my god, he's dead. <laughs> oh, wait a minute. He's, uh, he's dead now. Yeah, you have to uh, keep an eye, though. The OD is soon hitting six. There is potentially a play to be made there. Especially if a hero takes in. But... Oh, he's way forming as well. Very aggressive. Yeah, he keeps doing this. Just diving in and uh, letting himself be astral. He's like, well, if it's going to happen, it's going to be on my terms, damn it. <laughs> I'm a choose when I get astral. That's fair enough. Jump forwards in bottom. They're going for the spear again, but a nice little catch there from Solo as he's able to get off the Fate's Edict and save Kuman from a decent amount of damage. And it is going to be Six. enough to save his life. One, two, yeah. Just about. Very close. Playing against uh, Bloodseek is actually so fun. If you just buy an early wand, like, you offset all of his early damage. Like, look, look at these guys. They currently have 20 wand and a 10 stick playing against this lane. Yeah. And General's probably just going to chase down Oracle at this point. 
the what free courier? courier. Hello? Oh, yeah. oh. General? No, he wants the hero. I like this more, to be honest. Um, and he is going to go yeah. find that kill. Both getting silenced up afterwards, though. Kuman thinks he's taking some bits onto the snapfire, but he knows oh. when that silence come out, that could spell trouble. And now he pauses up as well. Lags. Meanwhile, up in the top lane. Oh, oh they didn't I want us to miss the kill. Thank you, guys. Oh, that was so nice of them. So sweet. Um, yeah, Zaya's pretty low. Ooh, laggy. <laughs> Interesting. Oh, what's going on mid? There's effects going all over the place. I'm not really sure what we're seeing here. I'm just going to quietly ignore this one, I think. I don't think there's anything going on mid. I think it's just uh, morphling models having heart attacks. But yeah, it's a bit of a mess. But yeah, Iceberg coming up at top, unleashing onto uh, onto Zayats and looking towards Resolution as well. Resolution probably a less likely kill since he's still got the orb, winning rift and phase shift all available at his disposal. But I'm fairly sure Zayats is dead to rights. But what do you guys think? Press 1 if you think Zaz is going to survive. Press 2 if you think he's dead. Press 3 if you think Resolution is also going to die. Or press 4 if you think that Resolution is going to die and Zaz is going to survive. Or press 5 if you want me to shut up and just continue cursing the game and stop spouting numbers out my ass. I was hoping for that last option, to be honest. I was like, at what point can we just gloss over? A lot of five. <laughs> And press oh, 6 God. if you think they can turn it around and VTune's going to die. Press 7 no. if you think both VTune and Always Wanna Fly are going to die. I like the... No, no, I like the part, actually, during this pause, which is people getting riled up about the talk of bounty runes. <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, Your horrendous maths. No, 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 because my point is about single heroes, right? I right, don't care right, about... Right. I'm not about the team. The, the statement was about, like... As an individual, the gold that you obtain and the region you lose offsets your ability to play the lane as a single hero, right? Yeah. I'm not talking about the entire team. Like, If you waste your region as a single hero, you don't have presence in the lane because you have no region, right? That's the point I was on about. Yeah, I, I, I suppose. But don't you benefit more by going for the rune to grab the bounty? I'm on about scenarios in which money. you know you can't get it, right? Like right, in the okay, scenario where there's okay. three heroes, right? Like you're running into two to three heroes Yeah. as a disadvantageous... Like, like you're, so an you're Oracle... saying wasting regen for no reason is a bad idea. Yeah, exactly. That's exactly so you the don't point really I was need to bring into it in the first place. <laughs> No, I just, yeah, it was a, it was a light comment, yeah. So comment. I am right. It, how dare you ex make a light comment? You, you mean every single comment you make isn't designed to be written down in a gospel of Dota 2 theory knowledge and published to all new players? No. Disgusting, actually. Disgusting. No, not at all. Why, why, what are you even doing here? Uh, don't know, mate. Just had nothing else to do today. Thought I'd just pop on, you know, just have a chat. <laughs> Well, anyways, uh, um, why are they? Why, why are we pause, mate? Come on! I don't know why. You oh, we're, we're gonna keep. We're gonna get you have the chat with the, with the admins right, and let's stuff. Let's have a look. Let's have a look. Well, that went uh, mm -hmm. well, that went bad quickly. Uh, they didn't say anything. Oh, they've they've laggy. Oh, says, uh, oh, they said laggy. Who said laggy? No, no one. Oh, no one said laggy. Uh, oh, it's spelled over. No, no wow. one said laggy. Someone did yeah, say I, that. I, I, laggy. Yeah, that yeah, was no one. one. Yeah, oh, no, no, okay. no, no, no talk on any of the channels. There's, there's nothing going on. The admin's just okay. like, oh, okay, he said lags. It's lags. Okay. Who wants cookies? Well, too bad. I, what was option five, by the way? That's the one that's winning yeah, with that, our great no, delay. That, that, oh, God. No. Uh, that was... Everyone's saying no five. Man's a really cool caster, press five. Oh, they told you to shut up. Oh, yeah. No, 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 no. no. It was if you think no man's a really cool caster, press five. <laughs> right. Thanks, guys. Thank you. <laughs> Can't we only know what's gonna happen. I know. It's just funny because you know it. Oh. Dude, chat was so quiet. It was just so quiet. Yeah. And then you basically say, Can you flame me real quick? And they're like, yeah. no problem. Oh, yes, we can. And this is our special rise to the occasion. <laughs> Rubbing their hands together. Positively right. drooling at the opportunity. Right, let's, so let's look at the let's look at mid lane real quick. Let's have a chat about mid. So OD doesn't actually apply much pressure to a lane in reality, right? And he annoys people with imprison, because obviously you can get the denies, but overall Morph gets that early bottle. He actually had room control quite often in terms of he had the lane pushed out at the correct times using the waveform, like you mentioned earlier. It meant he could get those runes. So he doesn't really care about that annoying kind of imprisonment stuff, because in reality he's always going to have high HP because he can morph down, bottle up, go back to lane. And... There's only kill potential mid if someone rotates in. In reality, that's never going to happen because Snapfire Lich, they don't really want to rotate, especially onto a Morphling. So I think overall, this is going to be a very, very clean Morphling game where he's only going to die if the OD just catches him off guard. A little bit too low HP, drops the hammer. 
There you go. A little bit of analysis done. Uh, back to some Thanks. random shit talk, if you like. I don't mind. Up to you. Oh, I'm drawing now. Oh, you are? What did you yeah. write? Oh. I, press one I can't read it because you're also syncing up with the enemies. Yeah, they're, they're drawing as well. I wish, we could, I wish we could write so that they could see it. I'm sure that would be balanced and cool. What would you? What are your thoughts if during a pause to prevent like um, teams being able to analyse the game, it just provided you just flashed up a mini game? Boom. What is Pong? <laughs> Everyone that, has to play Pong far, against someone. To be clear, that is the worst idea I have ever said, by the way. Mm -hmm. Just. I agree. <laughs> but, I can agree. Maybe, no, for casters, maybe. How about like a cheeky little, yeah, little That'd game of good. Pong on the yeah. mini-map? That'd be pretty cool. A mini-map game of Pong, yeah. Mini-map Pong. I'm into it. That'd be nice, yeah. Oh, we could do, uh, we could do Pictionary. Ready for some Pictionary? True. All right, you got to no, guess look, what I'm going to draw. Dude, how how we Pictionary? Look at these guys. They're... Just look for the white drawing. Mine, mine's okay. going to be white. It's going to be the more yeah, obvious one. It, oh, is right, there uh -oh, a theme? Uh-oh. Someone's uh, they, they're starting scribbling. Hey. Oh, no. Uh, the theme will be Dota. Dota. Oh, Why thank God. The Jesus come out. Oh, come out. God. Oh, we've got a live broadcast going into them, guys. Like... We say Pictionary, no, no drawing. All right, as they go on to top, which option do they go for? None of them. Five was the correct option, guys. Wait, what? Congratulations, guys. Four is the correct option. No, five. Five was... no. Yeah, exactly. Oh. <laughs> uh, well, no uh, lane, I, I guess. No one pushed in a bit, but a lot of dance came to defend. I have plenty of time to consider his options. Oh, bottom. It's bloody croquet okay here. Might as well be getting uh, yeah. himself a solo, mate. Nah. Oh! Uh, Jesus. Uh, That's somewhat close, though. Fate, Fate's Edict plus heal is uh, very strong. So is Mars, apparently. Doesn't have his face boots just yet, but he's coming in again and baiting the Oracle forward and then just throwing a spear in his face. Very rude. Hmm? Are you ready for the uh, Morphling Becomes Mars players? Yeah, I'm into that. I'm spears into left that. and right. Hell yeah. Uh, one thing I want to mention is what, um, Spear of Mars does uh, 325 uh, magical damage, you know, brought down by 25% is obviously going to be not that much. Um, yep. Blood Rite does 275 pure damage, right? So essentially, if we, yep. if we look at that in kind of like a physical setting, a, a ritual drawn on the floor in blood, basically like mm -hmm. a, a, a prayer, essentially, yep. Uh, from from a little red man does more damage than literally being impaled into a tree by a spear. By a spear, I yeah. Hmm. You know, just Dota things. Well, Casual. I'm not really a lore kind of guy, but yeah, Dota do is a magical game. It is. It is. The question is, like, you don't know what type of blood it is, right? Like, the blood could also have, like, disease in it, so. Oh, true. It's crap. <laughs> <laughs> it's already in Dota. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> too soon, too soon. All right, Morphling, they're setting up on maybe some mid play. He's going oh, for it. Oh, Jesus, aggressive. he gets baited in. But actually, who has baited whom? As that's coming in around the back. But the cookie going to get the uh, World Devourer to safety. My resolution turns up like, what up? I heard there's a gank going on. And they're like, no, go away, resolution. You weren't needed. You didn't do anything. Meanwhile, Instant smoke them into top lane. They yeah. did have the water to scout this out. So no one should die from this. That being no one in the game, not no one the player. Imagine if you could keep... <laughs> Alright, we're gonna stop with these hypotheticals. Indeed. The pause is over. Yeah. <laughs> that pause has ruined us. It has. It's, re it's really put a dent in our flow. Alright, let's get back into the flow. We're just gonna take... Okay, okay, okay. We're just gonna take like two seconds just to... Meditate. Breathe in. Breathe out. Focus. Empty our minds. And get into this game as resolutions being off. seen in the trees, getting jumped. Always want to fly though, turning it around with the citizen gaze. The monomous kiss is coming over the top as well, landing onto Zayats' face. Always want to fly, will get melted, but he takes Zayats down with him, resulting in a straight up trade resolution. It looks like he's trying to bait something here though. Oh, doesn't get off the face shift. What is you doing, kid? Use your spells, resolution. What are you doing? Trying to bait a cookie. little bit too hard. Yeah, yeah, something like that. Oh, Down now they're catching the morphling. Oh, no. Oh, no. No one's going to be okay. The dying. hammer wasn't He's enough. Fine. They thought they had the burst, but they had not got the burst. And now Slayer's going to come up and throw his friend some heals. All right. The fact that morphling can phase, uh, not phase shift, he can attribute shift all the way down to nothing and then get like one heal applied to him, be it like living armor, purifying flames, or even a south. And he's like back to full HP. That is... It's like the most obnoxious part of Morphling, for sure. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, Morphling's an asshole. <laughs> yeah, I hate leaning against that put, yeah, yeah. Pretty much, yeah. Or playing in that guy in like... general. It's like, can I burst him? No. Oh, okay. Nope. Well, just gonna let him walk away. Walk away on uh, strength. I think it'll be interesting to see how VP actually align their kind of their team to be cohesive because you've got this morphling just free farming and Zayat's kind of putting a lot of pressure just running between the um, in between the towers but at what point do they actually put the Bloodseeker in with the team right now he's doing a really good job of just keeping this bot lane pushed out I mean, look at the the presence right now from Fly to Moon there they're putting quite a lot of heroes now towards this bot lane and Kuman is able to push it out he's got three points in blood right so and yeah, one last push. That tower shouldn't really take too much damage. Moving back towards mid. I think TPing VP heroes down despite the Bloodseeker just uh -huh. TPing out, but that's coming in. He wants to uh, try and take up the guard here. General, he's fishing for a Bloodseeker, but is going to find a Doom instead. That's curious. And now Vitoon setting up for an easy pounce to get on top of him as well. And they should be able to bring him down. Tries to turn around as he go for the Doom there. But does get finished up and that resolution comes coil. in. A beautiful two-man coil, but they're going to turn it around with a Mars ulti. And now with the Shrapnel, the ultimate's coming in from oh. the top from the Snapfire. The damage! Oh, God, no. Aloha dance. With the Mortimer's Kisses doing way too much. They couldn't withstand it, but Kuman's coming in. He's trying to make the cleanup crew happen here, and he's going to find the Slark at the very least. Can't really go for any more here, though. So oh, gets his way, yeah. This is not how you want to make this play. Like, the Bloodseeker pushed out the lane to then go mid. Yeah. And then you suddenly get, like, this one-by-one -one TP situation Ooh. bottom. My god. Aloha Dance. Oh, oh my god. Throwing in the cookie onto the creep, followed up the spear. Mars trying to fight up into Kuman here. Kuman doesn't have much of a chance. It's going to get shotgun down. Just put to death. Snapfire is an absolute... No, Aloha Dance is an absolute player, actually. The, 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 the hero's average, well, maybe good. But Aloha Dance is playing pretty Heroes. damn sick right now. Yeah, he, Aloha Dance is having a good time to shine. He's really popping off. It's... Whew, like snapping off. Yeah. Oh, God. But... Why are VP fighting like this? They push out bot lane, blood to get TPs away, and then your Doom TPs in? Like, that's not a play. No way is that no. ever a play. No. They're, Maybe they're if, like, on the had, same page right now. If you had like a Wyvern TPing there, sure, because he has the same push potential, but a Doom doesn't do that. Okay, okay. VP needs quick reset, but it's yeah, not too bad. I think I guess the saving grace is even though that was like really Kappa, they didn't lose the tower. So, if they did TP away and left it, they'd have lost the tower there. So, technically, it is a tower defense. Finding the f victories, I guess. Yeah, yeah, silver linings, you know. You can always yeah, find exactly. them somewhere. Yeah, and we did find it right here, but... Yeah. Fight the moon instantly smoking back up, wanting to play aggressive. And it's actually, like, one thing, though, you will notice in, uh, like... Uh, true sight and all that kind of thing as well is that they, they it's a real thing you know like silver linings are a great way to enforce a positive attitude upon your team um, yeah for sure it just always find it that does, good thing there is always something there in every situation but it does get a bit annoying though when you hear your support say don't worry they just killed me I was trying to ward when he's by himself running high ground on the other side of the map silver you know, linings that's a, that's a pub reference but <laughs> silver linings that is key it's critical absolutely Mental stability in pro Dota teams is anything like fundamental. Yeah, true. If you know, if you if you lose a parent, then solo though. Oh, he's, dear. Stable. he's in trouble. See you later, buddy. They finally catch somebody in their trap, and that will be the Oracle brought down. Thank God. Now they look. Uh, they're watching. Kuman's pretty chill here. He's like, all right, my support just died, but pff, they won't be able to catch me. I'm Kuman. I'm Bloodseeker. I'm fine, and uh, that does remain to be true. Everyone else just kind of dissipating across the map. Vitune still pushing in bottom. Meanwhile, Vitune able to finish off his bottom tower at last, but tower ward definitely looking in Virtus Pro's favor. But yeah, Flight to Moon 11 kills up on uh, Virtus Pro's 4 right now, the 2k gun. <laughs> what the? He just got bashed and died. Oh. He got the DD on the Morphling, so they're trying to chunk through the Roshan, but unfortunately, you get bashed. Oh. It means you kind of oh. give away the fact you're doing Roshan. Yeah, it has, still but be with the double damage coming in, but in comes the Marth, he's trying to steal it here, but he actually gets a kill. Fair enough, no one takes the Aegis, and, well, Solo's gonna go down. Resolution might be next on the list here as he's trying to make him swap. Oh, yes, and we'll be so okay. Close. Yeah. You didn't see that, but... I didn't. Uh, Morphling went all the way down to 1 HP, and then the uh, Mars threw the spear, and it grazed his hitbox. Nearly a very quick Aegis.
Yeah. No, I, I do. I like the call to go to Roshan with the DD. Very good play. Yeah. Just unfortunately, he's like tanking one too many bashes. Yeah. RNG not on his side. Sometimes the uh, bash lord doth giveth to Roshan, uh, not just mm. Sladars. Well, I guess technically you, you can't get RNG bash and stuff, but shut up. Shut up. Uh, Flight of Moon holding this high ground Sorry, once again. Out, this is their area. This is their zone. This is their hoods. This is their neck. Yeah, and the warding is perfect for Dyer. It's the same as the last game. The warding is very good coming out from the Flight of Moon. Really putting pressure onto VP. Mm -hmm. And Solo, he's trying to get vision out here, but he's just going by himself. Normally, this just leads to just death. Yeah. Cookie, right click, stun, death. Yeah. Solo, the human ward right now, just uh, charging up onto these high grounds time and time again. And Resolution tickling some pickles right now as so he throws there. down. Yeah, and they're going to rupture onto Snapfire, who broke the coil, so can't even move anyway. But in comes. Oh no, stunned up immediately on Morphling, but it's okay. Doom is out onto the Slark as well, so pretty good fight so far from Virtus Pro as they'll jump forwards onto the OD as well, knowing that they need to keep their distance from him. Meanwhile, Banishman actually comes out onto the Morphling, who is also. Feared. No, now hold till to the wall. He's gonna lose the Aegis. Stages. Nice catch out. Meanwhile, the Doom just completely runs out on the Slark, and that's gonna give him the ability to just run down resolution. Meanwhile, no one trying the to finish off. Draw. Always wanna fly. They need to get a right click in. He's gonna frost shield. Die. Surely, surely, surely he gets him, but at what cost? No one could be in some real trouble right now. He's gonna pop the ghost set to try and buy himself some time to get that strength morph off. Form. And this seems like a very tricky kill for them to finish off here. He's still got plenty of strength to go. He They're gonna keep on chasing though. Too. Ooh, they He's away from up in. They have to eat through enough mana right now. He's got the 16 one charge yet. Perfectly Won't be fine, just... <coughs> Yeah. Even if they took all his mana, he had just enough one charges to be able to get the waveform off. So. All in all, uh, a very, a very vibrant fight down at bottom. They, they managed yeah, to claim the so. on the morphling, but losing, I think, three heroes in total on uh, on Virtus Pro the puck. And solo doing, yeah. It's oh, he's going again. Vu. Yeah, uh, he's yeah. like, you know what, guys. I th I'm I'm just gonna double check. They've definitely got a ward up here. Don't okay. worry, guys. I'm just Confirmed. trying to de ward. That doesn't Confirmed. matter, guys. Just doesn't matter. <laughs> they wasted in prison. Don't worry, guys. <laughs> Scraping the barrel here. Yeah, up, yeah I'm just trying to find the small things. Yeah. Up into top lane. Sarcasm. A powerful tool. Zayat. Oh. He's actually silent to iceberg with no one out. Ooh. Mm. Okay. okay, and this is the only the morphling situation. He <laughs> dropped the hammer. He, like, he has 27,000, yeah. 2700 mana, sorry, and morphling has 864. Radiant so he did quite a substantial amount of damage. Uh, yeah. Well, yeah, that's that's one way of putting it. You got mid lane as well, they're trying to go another way to put it. Yeah, Kuman trying to fight up into lower dance, but he gets disarmed to try and heal him through it, but unfortunately, Generals comes in and puts an end to him with that physical damage, and now oh, a, a cookie for Wood, a very Beautiful. handy creep there. Solo's gonna go down as well. General gets a double kill. Fly to Moon, they are all over them right now. Virtus Pro are being choked out off the map. No yeah, room to they, breathe yeah. at all. This is just what happens when you kind of lose touch on how you're playing the game and how you're playing the map. Like that one series of wrong TPs into bot lane, you lose all control. Like the vision is dire favored, the levels are dire favored. It's so hard for VP to truly take a fight because your entire fight is based around like you either want to rupture the Slark or you need to coil or they, you need to do something to get rid of the Slark whilst also dealing with the OD. Both these heroes have now got to a point where they have an item to have presence in these early fights. Again, greedier heroes, they have okay laning phase, but weak post laning phase impact until that first second item. And yeah, they've got over that initial hurdle and it's looking like a very relaxing game for Flight to Moon, but we saw in the last game, they have a good start to the game, they have good vision, but they go a little bit loose on positioning and VP came back, so don't count VP out in any way. Yeah, I was going to say, the big question on uh, most people's lips, I'm sure, is probably going to be what is going to come next for mm -hmm. Fly to Moon, you know? Is, is there a possibility of throwing the game? Is there a possibility of uh, messing up a fight? And the answer is definitely yes. There, it's, the answer is always yes, unfortunately, on that front. Um, so we'll see how tight they can play it, you know? Have they learned from game one? Oh, the Doom on the Lich, oh no. You, you're going to oh. get the lit. you might not even get the Lich kill. He You're probably not even it. getting the lich yeah. kill. He's just yeah. dying for not. Oh no. Oh, oh, oh. oh no. You know, there's one of these moments where you don't live just long enough to regret your mistakes and really reflect on things. How you ended up in the situation. The tier two tower, though. Worth. Yeah, worth. Totally worth. <laughs> money, money, money. When else are you going to get a tier two tower? 
when you're doom diving tier threes. No one's got a shotgun, but they're scanning him out right now. Yeah, they're they're aware. These are some wise cookies on the side of Fly to Moon. Yeah, Mars is about to get the pipe as well, so it's gonna be able to offset some of this initial damage from the shotgun. Mm -hmm. That being the e blade or morphling. Yeah, if you're quick enough, unaware. Of course, there's always the uh, the ability to just sneaky sneaky on the sidelines and uh, blow something mm -hmm. up in the morphling, which is yeah. terrifying. I think the the big concern though for VP is they moved into this area, they shut down some wards, took the tower, Radiant. but now their vision is in an area that they don't want to play. Like they don't, there's no Roshan to play. They have one ward bottom in a quite an obvious spot with a sentry already covering it, so that's going to be dewarded quite quickly. And Dyer also have two lingering wards deep in mid, so I think it's going to be quite, it's quite scary for VP just in terms of map oh, presence Rezo. and resolution. Oh, oh Rezo. He was just dead. a sweet oh. little fairy dragon out for a walk, and now he's dead. Meanwhile, Kuman, he thinks he's going to go for the rupture play onto the Slark here. I'm not quite sure what the deal is going on right now. There's no one turning into a lower dance, but still able to finish it okay. off. Finally gets a kill, okay. and okay. down goes. Go. Always want to fly as well. All right, nice start to the fight. Fly to Moon. Still considering going for something here, but I don't think anything's going to come from it. Their Slark is dead. Accept it. Move on. Kuman finds a kill. He's taking some hits in response. Iceberg actually popping the BKB, turning this one around, trying to really force this fight. It's, it's a two on five, though. They turn around, look at no one, but no one got the strength morph off. What is you doing, guys? Fly to Moon, get in reverse. And they are really, really trying to force something here, and they will pay for it. As a shotgun comes out, they get on top, and Solo finishes the job with a handy purifying flint, netting himself 637 gold in the process. But as Pro are back on the board. I'm just going to draw a box on the minimap in the area in which Fly to Moon mistake will box. mistake. Yeah. <laughs> this is. I expected this ward to get instantly dewarded. It's quite a natural spot when you move into an area. You always want to check this high ground and then you move on because again, high ground vision is is so Good. critical for any engagement. And yeah, flight moon, a lapse of judgment there. And then you see it. You have doom, rupture, coil. All of these are big control spells that if you can get it onto the slark or even the OD at some points, you're gonna be able to kill them. In this instance, it was on the slark. He done literally nothing in that fight. And here comes another coil. Out on mid this time, just on to the snap fire here. And General's going to respond by laying down the arena, but no one's got the double damage. Again, yes. another DD. Mm -hmm. And that's going to result in an easy kill. Meanwhile, Kuman on the sidelines gets a kill until Loha Dance. So once again, without their supports, Fly to Moon will just be chased back onto their high ground. This yeah. time, Loha Dance I dying twice in a row. It's, you, like, these fights went so well for Fly to Moon because it was your Slark in the front, your Mars in the front, you had the OD saving them. And on top of that, you had the snap fight. Oh, two fights in a row now. Your snap fires died pretty much instantly. This one obviously not yeah. being a full fight, it's just a pick off. But you have to be really like you have to really think about your positioning in these games. Like VP, if they see one mistake in a good position, they're going to go for it. Like sure, their start to the games haven't been good the previous two games, but their ability to pressure and actually have impact within the game, even when like five, ten, fifteen k behind, it's it's always going to be there. Like you have to respect their their pedigree. Bash are coming up on Kuman soon as well, so giving him the ability to just chase even harder, even faster. Lock the people down and uh, beat them down. That's the aim of the game. Sure. Beaky be coming out on Morphling soon. You've got Basha soon on Bloodseeker. I think you're going to want to see Fly to Me make a play now. You've got the BKB purchased on Slark as well. And the pipe on Mars. So you've got quite a lot of uh, an ability to go. The issue is, even though you have BKB on Slark, it's, you get doomed, it's, okay, cool, you're now out of the equation. We can now go for someone else, and it's, I think this next fight, it's all about the approach. You, you can't be, you can't rush into it, you can't do that kind of, like, Hail Mary, okay, just get to a high ground, guys, go, go, go. We, you have to be, you have to have sentries, you have to have wards, you have to have the correct positioning. If you don't do these things, you could potentially see VP just crushing the next fight. Yeah, it seems like the most likely scenario right now, it's, uh... A lot of control is is needed to make sure this Morphling is just running around, doing what he wants, Bloodseeker as well, just getting kills on the sidelines. You know, just better but, formations but the, and then better, yeah. Exactly that, but look at the lit right now. He has one sentry in inventory, it's courier, two sentries coming out. They have no wards to, to place for the fight. So right now, Oracle, he has no wards as well. Like, this next fight will just be purely a no-vision fight. Just going to be who has the better the usage of spells. <laughs> in the nighttime, yeah. With a Slark, so technically dire favor. 
True, true, that's uh, one small respite. A fire to moon reserved. <laughs> the Dooms realized, guys, we don't actually have a ward, so I will be the ward. <laughs> oh, there it is. Oh, oh my god, this is such a big play from Doom, if there they're is, in the position. He's, he's getting all the value from Oh, us. no. Side legs down, grab himself a centaur, and run himself away. See you later. That could have been such a great play. If they were a little bit closer on VP, the yeah. instant Doom from higher ground into them blinking onto the next area behind. Oh, that could have been so cool. All right. But also Close. so game losing at the same time, well, to be clear. Possibly, <laughs> possibly, yes. <laughs> But no, as we sleep, Fly to Moon opting to be really defensive. I think they've learned from the last game in their positioning and their kind of their throw is we're going to wait for VP to make a mistake. Oh, Unfortunate on the spear. On the side here. I'm not too sure the play is here as VT is going to run himself into the trees. He's got to pop the ultimate at some stage here. Or finally throw it down, but inside the silence, he's going to have to pop the, the dial pack. Three more seconds on Rupture. Trying to turn around to Kuman. Kuman, though, just right on top of the Doom comes down and they will be able to bring down the Slug. Slug does have buyback if he wants to come in and he will do so. Meanwhile, the Serena comes down and they're able to bring down there no one. The There's your big damage coming through. And with the frames coming in, Kuman's not going to be surviving this one. Solo does live long enough to get the ultimate out onto the Bloodseeker, but there is no way he's surviving surviving through this as he runs himself to safety. Solo gets bought down. Kuman's going to follow as well. And there's three kills going the way of Fly to Moon. A great setup for them as they do sacrifice their Slark, but they're going straight into Roshan. Instant and this into Roshan. will make really it, nice. it. Yeah. Honestly, the start of that fight was so good for Fly to Moon. you got to give props to the Slark. He gets ruptured and he goes into the one part of the map where he can kind of make it awkward for VP to go on him. Jumping right into that cove, like you have to move around the tree line to get vision on him. So I think really nice from the Slark. They had to commit both Rupture and Doom to kill him. Instant buyback, get Roshan. So overall, yeah, Fly to Moon. They changed up their playstyle. Normally a little bit more aggressive in these early parts of the game, but this game, no, we're gonna we made one mistake, we'll instantly play defensive. We'll wait for VP to make the mistake like we did in the last game, and then we'll play from there. So now they have the Aegis, they can go again. This means they might have to go into the box of mistakes that we've already kind of highlighted oh, no. for Fly to Moon. <laughs> Not the box but of mistakes. They got the Aegis. Oh, fuck. He's he in trouble. Oh, he the mind he in trouble. Yeah, Mindbreaker causing him issues. He's out of matter as well. He's got he a blink to, to work with. That's uh, going to possibly get him to safety. He has the fusal up into no mana, so he should just be a. Uh, from Vtune here, though. Let's see if there's any punishment on Virtus Pro. They are throwing some spells oh, yeah. over in his direction. <laughs> you know what, Craggy Coat? Craggy, yeah, this Craig, should be, oh, a, this should be a, a dead puck. And then I'm like, oh, wait, hold up. I just realized where he's on the map for a second. <laughs> Why is there a Craggy Coat on the floor, T? Why not? Where, where is it? It where belongs we to Virtus oh, okay. Pro, and uh, okay. it's chilling. No mm. one spotted well, it yet. You know who'd love a craggy coat? Lich, but he's already oh, got Lich one. has already got one. Oh, right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm with you. If you could combine... Oh, you should be able to combine two items. Like, if you pick up an enemy item, and you have the same, you should coat. be able to... Yeah. The craggiest of coats. The craggy jacket. Oh. Oh. The craggy pullover. Oh, we can do this for hours. Delicious, delicious armor, but absolutely zero attack speed. Just zero attack speed. That's it. You don't get to right click anymore if you were. <sighs> Nothing more. Oh, hold up. Solo. Oh, classic solo moves as he throws his life away for a D ward here as they will chain him up nicely and get themselves a kill onto that oracle. But no one TPing in as well though. They're, they're looking for a kill onto Iceberg. They're looking for the return here. They're going for a kill onto uh, OD and they've actually got him doomed up, coiled up. He should be bought down. He's trying to... Oh, I don't know what he's trying to do. He's just really circles, the waiting for death. Ooh. Yeah. Meanwhile... It was all a bait. No one just threw his body in. Pop the BKB. I'm... Pop the ethereal blade. Knowing what his team were doing, that was that was that was really impressive from Virtus Pro. Yeah, I read it. The I old bait and switch. Very nice. And now no one will come in to defend this bottom tier two tower. For realsies this time. Meanwhile, resolution. He's got a bit of deja vu here, but should be able to grab himself that bounty. Oh, it shoots a little bit, but it's all good. And uh, Rapture onto V tune. Yeah, this, this probably will just be a wasted age at this point. Out. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> All right. Fine. Wait, hold up a second. The box of mistakes. The box. The box of mistakes once again. Oh my god! It's 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 real. Oh, it's, it's real. It, Flight to Moon. It, it, it's disgusting. It, it, it's worrying that it exists, but it does. Oh, don't draw it. Oh no. Don't go in there. Don't go in there. Flight to Moon. Like, Three the times is, across this, two like, games. That moves fine if your entire team's there. The issue is your OD is just offset and for some reason mid, right? Naturally, because when you make a dive in one lane, you want to have 
both lanes pushing in so you can play off the the, the pressure. Simply Reaper identify that and are able to make the pick off. So the initial concept is good, but the execution of your team positioning is then poor. Yeah. I actually think it's so insane that the Morphling, you know, no one just knows his hero well enough. That he's like, mm -hmm. hey, you know what? I can jump into four heroes. I can pop my BKB and I know I'm going to survive. Like, that's just some insane this... game sense there. Yeah. But, like, you think about Secret and, like, Nisha and Morphling. Like, he's so disciplined with that hero and so strong with it. They were able to first phase it for so long in the previous seasons, right? Yeah. Like, it's such a good hero. Like, if you if you know how to play that hero, this the, the, the skill level to that hero is so high. Yeah disgustingly high actually it, it, it pains me to say but now they're moving back into bot lane i think this now is the one time they can move into the box of mistakes and get that free tower it's looking like this time the uh the box won't deliver but still but as pro very very happy to have uh, kind of neutralized the threat in this game taking down that ages for free and disrupting what vitamin want to do a lot here meanwhile solo was Playing with death once again. It's his favorite pastime. VP are smote up though. They are also in a very defensive position. Look at this. No guy. vision from VP on the high ground. He's just here to pop smokes. This guy literally just wants to pop smokes. That's all he wants to do. That's fair enough. The scan identifies exactly where they are. It's pretty obvious at this point, but. Yep. Oh, Rezo <laughs> just. What the. Would you... <laughs> Howdy, right. boys. Yeah, just. Um, he doesn't have a blink and they still don't. They're still too afraid to jump him here because if they do. And pain would shortly be coming their way. I mean, no one was it's still a simply, fair way off. But It's simply the respect of moving into areas that you don't control. Like, VP, they technically, if you had to claim part of the map, the raid, the Dire jungle was their side. R uh, the Dire owned the Radiant jungle. Okay? So, well, you it's, always it's, have it's to respect the, the ownership. It, yeah, exactly. Middle lane is so, a new river in Dota. That's what, uh, exactly. that's what you must understand. And that is, like, the, the beauty of Dota, right? It's the organic shift of the 50-50 split that normally happens in an even game. Be it a vertical split, horizontal, diagonal, it exists. Now that is Pro's chance to uh, maybe take some prods at the high ground, see who they can force back, see how much they can get for this. Um, I don't know if we've uh, mentioned this, but there is a hex now on the OD. Ooh, we have not. That is, uh, that so, is a revelation. Spooky times are ahead. They've got the smoke as well on the snapfire. Bot lane's pushed in, mid lane's going to be pushing in towards them so i'd like to see them maybe push out mid and top once to then go for the smoke play i think if they do it too early it's gonna to be too obvious especially with this mid lane coming in but okay so as yeah, soon as they see oracle bottom they're gonna go okay you see oracle yep. shows bottom boom instant smoke they know what's happening snapfire will probably push out mid lane as he runs past Whoop. there we go kill them creepies and pings straight away and off we go yep but look look, look at the positioning of of flight to moon look they're going to an area that they have sentries in they're going to an area that they have like false confidence of owning vp they're like all right where are they coming they're smoked we're going to move into the area that we know that we control mm -hmm. beautiful movements coming out from uh from both teams actually yep a common dance we've seen many a time as no one sits on this bounty on this illusion and they see it and they see these illusions of morphling pop out and they're like okay all right something's going on here so flight to moon they give up the goat and uh, push in middle. Oh, the wave. day no, the, the, the lich running through daytime. Yeah. Let's see. Okay. Oh, oh, I did make no, it back. VP he was like the, he was like the last sheep, wasn't he? Trying to get himself yes. over to the pack, but now resolution jumps in. Only lands onto OD. However, with the uh, arena coming down, Gerald doing a good job at controlling them up. But meanwhile, the doom is out onto the outward devourer. There's not much he can do in this fight right now. But resolution is probably going to get dropped. Meanwhile, rupture also throwing everything onto the OD. They will be able to take care of him. No buyback either. Meanwhile, they turn their attention over towards the snapfire. Snapfire made invis for the time being, but the moment that's gone, they will tear through him. Virtus Pro, just like that, in the snap of her fingers, take the fight entirely in their control and once again you know this mars arena just seems to be so important for controlling up especially the doom but just creating some semblance of formality in the fights in which flight and moon can actually play their heroes because the moment things start to break apart the snapfire can't do anything she, she's screwed she's like well my kisses aren't gonna do much the od gets doomed up which is obviously terrible the Slark's the only one having a nice time in these fights when they start going this way. When the chaos breaks out, the Slark is pretty much the only one on the side of Flight to Moon who seems to have much of an effect. Yeah, I really feel like I'd like to see a Lincolns on the OD. I know Slark's got his quick buy, but this fight for Flight to Moon, they have a, this area of the map they feel like they control, but when the, the Doom has Shadow Blade and Blink, it's so easy for him to identify the location of the OD and get the ult. Like, in any fight, you want to like rupture the Slark, 
Doom the OD, play the fight out. Yeah. And like the Mars, sure, he was able to zone people with his ultimate on the back line, but the Doom had already done his job. Like the Morph was already deep in the line getting the right clicks off. Like it's yeah, it's I think itemization right now is what's holding Flight to Moon back from being able to take those harder engagements. Like, yeah. It's so easy for VP to fight if they have the spells up. There's also pretty insane positioning as well, you know. Um, Virtus Pro, I think three or four heroes came from this direction, but what actually happened was the Doom mm -hmm. snuck around the side like this. You know, yeah, he, exactly. he, he didn't yeah. follow suit. He knew that, mm -hmm. you know, they're going to draw their attention on the front lines. Resolution is, is just going to jump in immediately on the puck and make a big fuss as they bring down Lich yeah. free. And using that, you know, the Doom's like, all right, I can probably find my entry point. And now a rupture come forward onto the Snapfire. Snapfire kept okay for now. Oh, the OD's been caught but again. Oh, though. no, this is a big target. He's forced to pop the BKB, but the damage from no one, it's probably going to be too much with everyone on top of him. Virtus Pro, the cheese comes out, though, but he can't get off the right clicks. Now one of his kids is coming on over the top. Kuman, he's the one in trouble. VTune's taking chunks out of him, and the Bloodseeker is going to go down, so turn their attention towards other targets, but no one. He's jumping around the back. He's finding targets. Shotgun out on the OD, but they get the kill onto Kuman instead. And now Flight to Moon, well, there. There's your doom, there's a big damage coming down, and OD just simply disappears. Slark trying to fight up as well, but he has not got an ultimate. He silenced up as well. He will be jumped up onto the high ground, but General might be left behind. Forced to pop that BKB, turns around with the God's Rebuke. Meanwhile, Resolution jumping in deep. V-Tune back in, trying to fight up into the Morphling. He is the threat, but Morphling waveforms away. And now, well, Flight to Moon, they're tempted. Throwing in the creep. Oh, what the? Oh, what the? It was sick creep plays. Um, but yeah, looks like they're struggling to find anybody right now. A spear's gonna go flying astray, if only it went through waveform, eh? Meanwhile, Science coming down onto two, and now no one comes in with a shotgun onto the slug. They're going for the big target right now. Can they finish the job, though? In comes the Ice Blast, in comes the Fear, and Suichun will be able to find himself a kill onto Zayats. Meanwhile, oh, well, they're out of here. Coil three. Oh, a beautiful spear, but unfortunately, I don't think it matters. I think no one should still be able to get himself away. v still optimistic, still chasing, but the Morphling is gone. He is steam. He is water in the wind, and I think that will put an end to this fight as, uh, well, I mean, fight recap's going to be pretty useless here. It's a fight went on for so long, but I think overall, it was a bit of a shift in Flight to Moon's favor in the end, but the Orc, the, I don't know, the OD going down is a big one though, right? I think this just highlights how Flight Moon only wins these engagements based off of the overaggression of VP. And Flight Moon, this OD, he's struggling so hard to have an uh, impact within these fights at this point. Like, he's got BKB Hex, but he's got no item to save himself from the Doom. He doesn't have like a blink to maybe, like if the Doom comes in, he can instantly dip out. Like he's got nothing to save himself, right? And or Lincoln's as well. Oh, the instant smoke cancel as well. So I think... <laughs> VP, sure, they might have had a couple kills like deaths at the end of that fight, but I think this is very v VP favored right now. What's the what's the win probability? What's that saying? Uh, win probability. It's it's like sixty one percent radian. Yeah, oh, yeah okay. it's, it's, it's slightly VP favored. Kind of to be expected. Which is expected. Oh, yeah, this is yeah, this is kind of how, as it should be. Yeah, I think Roshan's going to be the next. Yeah, Roshan's now back up, so this is going to be the big play for for these teams. Both, Both teams, teams yeah. have vision around the pit. They're going to be able to take a decent fight. I think it's so. It's all down to this Doom. If Doom can can locate the OD at the start of this fight, it's going to be very yeah over before it even started. Yeah, man, Zayas is so rich. Jesus Christ, he's got so much money. Smoking under a ward though. Oh, yeah, so it's a low hard dance. They see them right now. Resolution immediately going in with a two man coil. Is it going to be enough though? As Mars moonwalking through his fight. Now in comes Iceberg, but getting there himself it doomed There's up. It's doom. an easy target. What are you doing, Iceberg? He's held still on the front lines. Meanwhile, the Slark also speared to the side. And now the kills start coming in for Virtus Pro as Iceberg and always want to fly. Already gone down. And now, well, General's going to follow. And it looks like Snapfire is not long for this world. Four heroes dead. Swiped off the earth. You can't do this on the out of the power you know you have to pay the doom some respect if you can't control him if you haven't seen him and if you haven't seen that doom come down yet you can't just run in on the front lines like a vanguard charge off the light brigade style and immediately losing your od's effectiveness in these fights i think this is just everyone can see what's yeah. happening no exactly that you've got a 17k net worth od that is pretty much put to zero like from one spell he does nothing so it's a worrying position for Fly to Moon to be in. I, Absolutely. It often when we get to these positions, we have to try and find ways for them to come back into the into the game. And I think right now it's nothing to do about items you farm or fights you take. It's just about 
where you're taking the fight. Like, why are you taking them? Right now, they just seem to be taking them because they feel like that's what they need to do. Like, In reality... I mean, they needed that one for Roche, but yeah, it's uh, an yeah, incredibly it's, awkward I, way to do it. Exactly. They need to They need to do the fight based off of... Like, like you said, they need to find the Doom first. They need to actually identify Doom's winning the fight, so let's find Doom. Right now, they just seem to be do taking the fights the same way that they have from minute 10 when Doom wasn't having as much impact. Like, you need to adapt. You need to change your game plan to how VP are winning. Like VP, Ouch. they show that they have adaptation, right? Ouch! Ouch. Okay. All See right. you, buddy. See ya. Okay. Always well, on a fly. Explain. Put into a yeah, grave. Listen. Now we're just gonna, yeah. VP just aren't gonna leave. The classic. We don't. We haven't taken a tier two. Let's just take the tier fours. Yep. That seemed to be the play here. Pop uh, doesn't have a TP up though, so they might show a little bit of respect. Okay, yeah, cool they are. Yeah, oh. Vichy's running be? at four heroes. Hey boys, how's it going? And with more of those kisses coming in over the top as well, not much of a threat though. They found the Morphling on the back lines though. They managed yeah, to get the, the Hex out onto him as well, but he's just going to pop the BKB. They don't go for the sticks. They didn't have it up. And now with the Doom coming down once again onto the OD. OD being chased down. Zayat and no one. That's all they need right now. And they will be able to get a kill onto the OD. He does not have buyback. And now they turn over and just blow apart General as well. Virtus Pro. The game is theirs. They can take down the tier fours now, but it, I don't really think it matters too much. There are two buyback. Okay, four on five. Uh, nah. It's your, gone. your draft's built around the OD ultimate to deal with the Morphling, and he has Scardy, BKB, and Aegis. Like, yeah, yeah this is. This OD dying three to four fights in a row just from Doom. Still fighting, I'm still trying to make it work, but V2 just being run down, basically ignored as Kuman machine go. guns through everybody. And there's your GG's coming out. Fly to Moon do eventually call it as they get beaten down again and again and again. Virtus Pro will take the series 2 0. And yeah. pretty tasty game, all things considered. Zayat's with a pretty godly Doom-like performance. Yeah, I think if we had to try and summarize the game overall, the series, I think VP, their early game, was a little bit underwhelming. I think this game, Morphling, had a really good start to the game. But overall, it's like Flight to Moon, their post-laning phase moves and aggression were far better than VP. Their ability to ward and take over the map as a team, much better. The issue was sustaining that for long enough to be able to truly get a lead big enough to win the game, they were unable to obtain two games in a row. They yeah. made the mistakes. We make the meme about the box of mistakes, but it's very true. <laughs> that location it, it really of the map was, yeah. dismantled their entire concept of their pressure. They but Don't died go there, two, fly three. to me. Yeah, yeah. And the times that they died in that location put the game in such a favorable position for VP where they're like, oh, cool. Now we don't really care about them because we've got all the items that we need to deal with them. And on top of that, when you get to the important fights, like the crucial game deciding fights where you can ignore all the previous mistakes you've made because now it's like we win the fight, we can take the Roshan, we can take an objective, probably win the game, right? When we get to yeah. those fights, your OD then doomed three, four times in a row. So <laughs> yeah, it's uh, props to VP. I think overall just way much more disciplined in that team-based calls moving into the middle game. Early game, they probably have uh, improvements to make, but overall, VP much better today. Yep, definitely much better today than they were yesterday, and uh, good to see it. Um, Fly to Moon will take the loss 0-2 uh, to, to Virtus Pro, and that's going to kind of pop Virtus Pro up the leaderboards a little bit, get them some all important points, which they sorely need uh, in this Paramatch League. So... That's going to be it for the second series of the day, but we do have one more series coming up, and that one is going to be Hellraisers versus Team Spirit, which is going to be coming up uh, probably uh, around 15, 20 minutes, I would guess. Maybe they might decide to do it on the hour. I don't know. Uh, not, not really much information given to us, but uh, Hellraisers versus Team Spirit will be coming up at some point in the future today. Uh, so hang around for that one because, well... Team Spirit didn't have the best of showings earlier on, but if they can pull it out the bag versus Hellraisers, then that would definitely make them be a f team to fear, uh, to be honest, in, in, this, uh, in this one. So definitely excited to uh, see what they can pull out the bag here. Meanwhile, uh, we're going to throw it over to a quick break. Uh, my name is Noman. He's been T Governor. Uh, we love you very much, and we'll be back after a break for that final series of the day. See you shortly. <laughs> 